tract and helps to heal the cells, helps to prevent leaky gut. And leaky gut is a term to um, describe when there are openings between the cells of the gut which allow substances which n wouldn't normally pass into the tissues and bloodstream uh, to pass into. So leaky gut's like a lot of holes. Candida can create leaky gut, but there is also some misinformation that once candida burrows through the tissue that that hole would remain and it's more likely that the body can repair that. Only in someone who is very severely diseased would you see that it wasn't able to repair these holes. So leaky gut may be something that appears at one time but doesn't really show up later on so it may not be a persistent problem but in someone who has um, a loss of a lot of the normal bacterial uh, flora which are the bacterial colonies, um, a lot of invasive pathogenic bacteria or fungus then you might see more of that taking place. So we lose butyric acid. Butyric acid has an antifungal effect. It inhibits the yeast to fungus conversion of candida. So here you've got three, three ways already. Um, what's amazing to me is that, I mean, these are three ways that definitely prove, you know, this is how this takes place. Number four, antibiotics destroy bacterial colonies causing a hemorrhaging of intercellular bacterial components. So the bacterial cell itself contains all these substances which the body is very immunoreactive to, that it initiates a very strong immune reaction. And when you destroy the bacteria, the, the cells fall apart, all this stuff leaks out into the body, it increases a pro-inflammatory response in the body. So that pro-inflammatory response is part of the body's healing response. Many times antibiotics are given to shut down that pro-inflammatory response. And they do that by inhibiting the white blood cells which create that response. So antibiotics actually interfere with healing and they suppress the immune system. And we'll get into that later on. That's one of the ways that antibiotics also contribute to the growth of fungus in the body. Um, but what you see is one, some of the substances, peptidoglycans, which also are composed of two substances, uh, N-acetylmeramic acid and N-acetylglucosamine. These two substances are strong, potent uh, promoters of the yeast to fungus conversion in candida. So when you take an antibiotic and you destroy bacteria, whether it's good, bad, you know, any of the bacteria in the digestive tract, you have a lot of leaking of these substances. And this is in primarily peptidoglycans are in what's called gram-positive bacteria. And there's some things I'm not getting into because this could just go on forever. But we have gram-negative, gram-positive. But so by destroying these substances, it promotes the yeast to fungus conversion. So we have another way this takes place. Number five, antibiotics suppress macrophages, which inhibit fungal candida. Now macrophages are white blood cells, and macrophages are considered the primary line of defense in the body against all infectious agents. Well, this isn't something coming into the body, this is something that's already in the body. And candida, the fungal form of candida, has repeatedly and routinely, routinely shown that it has the ability to suppress macrophages, evade macrophages, destroy macrophages, and inhibit their function. Uh, some of the research shows that when a, a macrophage comes along, we'll eat um, microorganisms, and, um, and then it'll destroy them. So I think what I'd like to do now is actually go into some of our videos, and um, we'll see some of this taking place in some of these videos, and uh, you can refer back to it, and as I go through some more of the information, you can kind of have the image of the video in your mind, and, and we'll, we'll see what happened in those videos. So the first video we're going to show you is um, actually a, a great uh, piece of animation which I think is, uh, you can find on YouTube, and it's uh, from a company, Hybrid Medicalization, or medical company. And it's, it's going to show you the hyphal form of uh, fungus. So this hyphal form of fungus is elongated. So you'll see what, what at the tip was the yeast cell. And as it uh, changes, it kind of grows this long projection, this filamentous form, this hyphal extension, this kind of long piece. And you can see how that contains what you're seeing are pictures of enzymes and, and sugars and different intracellular components. But again, the original form was that little bulb at the top, that yeast, and it changed into this. Now, if you can picture a, a macrophage or a white blood cell trying to eat the yeast, that's easy because it's a little form. It's that little bulb at the top. It can consume that. But for it to try and eat this very, very long filamentous fungal form, very difficult. And science shows us that when it even tries to do that, that enables the fungus, the candida fungus, to um, cause the immune system to shift into a response that favors more spread and growth of candida. So in this next video, we're going to look at um, 
basically, I believe it's from the same company. It's another anim animation piece. Or wait, where are we now? So let me see what's coming up. Okay, this is another animation different. You're going to see first from the viewpoint of the, the yeast in the body. Maybe you can freeze it on that when it comes up. Um, and it'll show you here uh, the brown is going to be the yeast cells. So there's the yeast cells. And what you see coming towards them is a white blood cell. So the yeast cell is there. You see it's round. This is the normal shape of the yeast cell. Um, and and all, most things that you see about bacteria and yeast is a little misleading. They seem like to have this smooth, round surface, and there are actually uh, receptors that coat the surfaces. Um, but generally, this gives you a good idea. So we'll continue on with that. And what you're going to see are some of these yeast cells in the upper left corner. They're going to elongate very rapidly. And you'll, there it goes. And you can see another one in the middle screen at the top that just did that. So it changes very rapidly to adapt to the white blood cells coming after it. Now, sometimes that change doesn't take place until the macrophage or the white blood cell has eaten the yeast. And then it'll change that form and rupture the cell membrane of the white blood cell. It, 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 it does this very effectively. Also, it will, science shows us repeatedly that it has, once it's inside the macrophage, it can start to take apart the macrophage. It can start to destroy these, these protein filaments that make up the structure of the macrophage, so it can weaken the macrophage. Uh, when we look at white blood cells, one of the ways they destroy bacteria and fungus is, or try to destroy fungus, is they secrete enzymes and uh, kind of this oxygenated, oxidative burst, which will destroy the substance. And um, um, I think that'll be in our next video. But um, it's, it's that oxidative burst which will instantly dissolve these, these substances. And with candida, it has an ability to instantly adapt to go into a different, it's called starvation mode, so it doesn't require sugars, it can start to live off fats, it can start to live off whatever it finds inside the white blood cell, and it can resist this oxidative burst, this attempt by the white blood cell to try and destroy it. So we'll see that in our next video, um, which we're gonna put up here now. And thanks for hanging with us, this is, this is all kinda new. So you can see what are white blood cells, and you can see these little kind of purple pinkish bacteria and you see the white blood cell kind of open up and create like a mouth and then engulf the bacteria and you'll watch the bacteria now and it'll dissolve it's gone so that's what white blood cells do to organisms that they find in the body then and we'll, we'll just keep replaying this for a little bit so once they engulf that and they dissolve it through this oxidative burst what you're going to see is they engulf it and they form a little sac around the bacteria or yeast or whatever and then another sac will come and attach to it that contains the enzymes and those enzymes will be released into the sac containing the bacteria and destroy it. And um, these little vacuoles or sacs uh, are designed this way so they don't destroy the inner mechanism of the white blood cell. So this is one of the ways it does. Well, candida in its yeast form has the ability to adapt and change instantly and evade that, that or change that response inside the macrophage, the neutrophil, another type of white blood cell, or a dendritic cell. Um, I think we'll show this one more time, then we'll move on to a good video that shows uh, white blood cells consuming yeast and how the yeast never dissolves. It has the ability to persist. And when, again, what I mentioned, one of, the, one of the mechanisms, it'll turn to its filamentous form and rupture the white blood cell. We don't have that video, but we do have video of the uh, yeast cell, which is going to um, be able to survive and continue on. So you see white blood cells just gra gobbling up all the the yeast, and you see how the yeast, you can still see all the little white and uh, um, yellow fluorescent yeast cells inside the bacteria. It's, it's going nowhere. It's, it's not dissolving it. Uh, so eventually these yeast uh, cells will convert to a fungal form and rupture the membrane of the white blood cell. Um, and that's uh, it's a great video. Um, and there, I think there are several videos out there that demonstrate this, how these uh, yeast cells can actually continue to survive inside the white blood cell. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So what's our next one? Our next one's kind of long, so we may just cut this short. But uh, I think this is going to show you the presence of uh, yeast. Oh, is this? Oh, okay. This is another one of the yeast cell and a dendritic cell. It's really hard to distinguish them, but they're again going to consume um, the yeast cells. So the big cells are the white blood cells, and the little uh, cells you see are the yeast. 
Again, this is a good, a good example of white blood cells, human cells being much larger than the microorganisms. But the microorganisms have uh, 